This is where it happened. It was here that I conducted the ritual, sewing my soul and the essence of the Abyss together, feeling the world change around me as every stitch brought Galarian closer to the Abyss. And it was here that even though you have no memory of it, I did the same to your soul. A researcher must not have any personal feelings for the subjects of their experiments. And yet, I find myself unable to remain completely detached from the world wound. I created it. I allowed it to be. It holds a place in my heart, even if I'm slowly paying for it with my life. A researcher must be particularly resilient in the face of mistakes, incorrect hypotheses, and failed experiments. You are my failed experiment. I think I'll feel some regret for ending your current life, but you can rest assured that such sentiments will not stop me. You're so adept at magic. Of course, I've been preparing for our meeting. And hopefully I've prepared well. Yes. <laughs> and no. Even if I could have brought back my daughter, I wouldn't have stopped at that. I wouldn't have been satisfied. Not after what I'd gone through. Not after the things I'd learned. I wanted to become stronger, and I wished the same for my child. I didn't want to be afraid of anything. It wasn't the dogs of Threshold, or even Sarkoris itself, that threatened us. It was the laws of a world governed by death, weakness, and separation. That is why I needed the power of the Nehindrian crystals. I did not merely wish to stave off the agony of the wound. I wanted to tear my daughter from the grasp of everything that makes us weak and mortal. You have seen a goddess. You have been face to face with demon lords. Were you awed by their greatness? Do you enjoy living in a world where your entire life cycle has been predetermined? Where everything, from your birth to what will happen to your soul after you die, has been decided for you? Or do you find, now that you have experienced the mythic power coursing through your blood, that you prefer to live in a world that you can change? A world that offers you a chance to be anything you want? How strange. You are a kindred spirit. We are so alike. Perhaps the experiment wasn't such a failure in the end. But no. No. When I poured what was left of my daughter's soul into your soul, I was expecting it to bring her back. They say death and the judgment of Phrasma purges the soul of everything it once was in life. But this cannot be true. I have researched this subject meticulously, and have collected enough evidence to prove that supernatural beings born from mortal souls can recall their past. Sometimes partially, sometimes fully. I watched you day and night, waiting for it to happen. For your memory to awaken, or, or your instincts at least, for anything familiar, something I could immediately recognize. I tested you. I asked you questions and... Nothing. Nothing. If a hypothesis is proven wrong, it needs to be rejected. But the research process does not stop there. That is all I can tell you right now. It will kill me eventually. But I still have some time left. Years. Or decades, perhaps. But it doesn't matter. One of us will die today. The tearing of the soul. Followed by a cruel and terrible death. But it will likely be quick. 
Then it's finally time to end all this. Yes, it was bound to happen, and happen it will. I am ready. Death is not the end. I have spent a hundred years trying to prove it, and I will not stop now. This experiment was unsuccessful, but that just means I need to adjust the initial conditions and try again. I am still alive. I still have time. You, the current you, will have to die. But only to surrender the soul you share with my daughter. I will start over. This time I will do everything differently. I will work with even greater precision. I will turn the world upside down if I must. I promise. be responsible for the creation of my most powerful enemy. I would be overjoyed to discover that I am wrong. I tried to hope, even though there was no hope left. But wait, why do you care? Why are you trying to change my mind? That thirst for truth and knowledge, that is so familiar. But what makes you think I will listen to your arguments? I have gone too far to turn back. I must walk the path I have chosen. You think I'm wrong about you? Why? We are not talking about numbers, equations, and magical reactions. This is about the soul. About whether or not you have what I lost. Yes, I remember. I wanted to check, to see for certain if it would awaken your instincts. I was so full of hope that day. Yes, I was disguised as Yaniel. This was our first conversation face to face. I was desperate. I needed to know who you were to understand what you were. I wanted to find out if there was anything about you I recognized. You hungered for knowledge. You desired the truth more than anything else. Yes. I wanted to see if something would stir within you when you met my daughter's murderer. And when you encountered the one who betrayed me. But it doesn't matter. I asked you questions, you answered them. And I thought I could hear the echoes of the past in your voice. And the vial of the summoning formula. The same formula my daughter borrowed for her own experiments. She always loved summoning. Always. That's enough. I... I can see now. It was naive of me to think I could just revive my daughter the way she was before her death. But there is so much of her in you. So much of me. I can't think of you as anything but my child. I have wandered in the dark for so long. But now I finally see clearly. I know how my path must end. The wound still erodes your soul, as it does mine. Let me put an end to my creation. Let me step into the flames and perish, so that I can heal you. Watch and learn. All these years, I've been playing a game with mortals and forces beyond mortal comprehension. But now I am a pawn in your game. I do not know your next move. I can't even imagine what plan you have in mind. So explain it to me. One step at a time. I see I was right to leave the lexicon in a place where you could find it. Yes, that is correct. We've reached the limits of our power. 
I did so long ago, and you've realized your full potential only recently. Mythic power cannot be made any stronger. At least, I have not been able to do so successfully. That means we are now living on borrowed time, counting down the days until we die from the wound's influence. No, I have not. I haven't had the chance. It was in Canabras that I had my first chance to test the improved version of the Midnight Bolts against the Demon Lord Descari. The crystal dagger you found in Canabras was the first Mahindrian crystal that was procured in such a fashion. I gather that you know more about them than I do. Yes, I am sure that is the case. I have evidence from my experiments. The wound affects the material plane, poisoning it with the corruption of the Abyss. But it also affects the Abyss, bringing in a small amount of order and harmony from the material plane. The only reason it is not as apparent in the Abyss is the presence of the Demon Lords. They hold near infinite power over their realms, and their existence staves off the wound's influence. Yes, indeed. The Sword of Valor was Iomade's banner before she passed the test of the Star Stone and ascended to Heaven. I've never studied the Sword of Valor. Perhaps I should have. It is a truly fascinating artifact, and the way it interacts with you is incredible. Could it have picked up the early signs of your nascent divinity? I do not know. It's unpredictable and dangerous, but all bold plans carry risk. What you propose might work. Whoever absorbs the power of a newly killed demon lord will inherit their realm in the Abyss. If we throw in a connection to the wound, we will end up with something unique. You will have the power of a demigod and an Abyssal realm that changes at your whim. Yes, your plan might work. I see no reason we shouldn't at least try. But how? There are only three demon lords whose realms are tied to the wound. Baphomet, Discari, and Nocticula. I doubt we'd be able to carry out a cunning murder of the Lady of Cunning and Murder. As for Baphomet and Discari, after the lessons you've taught them, they will never risk another engagement. They'll engage in clever maneuvers. They'll hide, but they won't face you in battle. They are bound to appear? I didn't know that. No wonder demon lords are so careful about choosing archpriests. Correct. And the Locust Lord still hasn't deprived me of his favor. He should have done that a long, long time ago. <laughs> yes, it is true. Baphomet outsmarted himself when he granted me power and patronage behind Descari's back. I could summon them. No, it's still too much of a risk. The world wound is more than a rift. It has a life of its own. To accomplish the plan you have conceived, we would need to channel an immense current of power through it, all the way to the realms of the Demon Lords. It would be a hundred times more difficult than simply closing the wound. It's remarkable that the worshippers of Pelura were able to discern this. Yes, you are correct. Such days do exist, but they occur very rarely. Only once or twice a century at most. I can't run the full calculations right now, but I think you're right. This is the day when the wound is most malleable. 
we could shape it as easily as a master potter molds soft clay. I have one final question for you. Do you have a new Nahindrian crystal in your possession? Without one, this whole plan is doomed. Unless, of course, you happen to have a midnight boat. If so, we can procure a crystal right now. Then let us begin. I do love interesting challenges. Descari, Lord of the Locust Host, Aurelu Borlesh calls to you, as I once called before from within these very walls. I am the first of your servants, and I summon you. Come, Baphomet, Lord of Beasts and Labyrinths, heed the voice of Aurelu the Witch. You accepted me into the ranks of your servants, and I summon you now as the first among them. Come! Come. Come. Come! Oh, curious! The Nats have decided to set a trap for me! You have spun out your betrayal like an intricate web, but it will take more than that to bring down the hunger of the Abyss. First, my daughter failed me, and now my chosen mortal favorite does the same. Arilu, do you not see that this alliance with your mortal creation will give you nothing? You could have served the greatest of masters, yet you chose to be the puppet of your own creation. Enough, Baphomet! You are wasting your time on words when the time for words has long passed. We shall fight those who have challenged us and obliterate them. The Scari has spoken! Come far, mortal, but not far enough to overpower two lords of the Abyss. You believe yourselves to be our masters. You think you will be our doom. But you've never been anything more than a source of power. We will drain this source to the last drop. to greatness lies ahead. All that remains is for you to use a crystal. I can only guess. The regular crystals allowed you to impart some of your power to your followers, those whose souls were closely tied to yours. It is likely that an improved crystal would let you endow your companions with a small amount of the demigod-like power you are about to receive. The wound will eventually destroy my soul. I will never be truly healed. But I have no regrets. I achieved everything I wanted and more. Ascend together? and live without fear of gods or demons, exploring the infinite world. You truly want this. I can't believe it. But I will grant you your wish.
And what of me, the writer of these words? The half-demon witch known as the architect of the world wound. I gained more than I could have hoped. I achieved my purpose. I vanquished death. Untold might and all eternity lie ahead. How should I spend that eternity? I have not yet decided. But I know from experience, I know that every moment is priceless if it is spent with the one who matters most to you. I have recounted the story of my life for you, Phrasma, Lady of Graves. Not only of my life, but of the Commander's also. I believe the tale of such an illustrious figure would pique even a goddess's curiosity. I have come here to say that she and I are no longer in your power. This is the last, most significant result of my transformation experiment. She is no longer within my power. This is true. Divinity has given her the right to decide her own fate. But you... You entered my boneyard to bring me these tidings. And it is within my power to unmake you, destroy you, and erase you from the cosmos. I wonder... Did she anticipate such an outcome? Did she purposefully choose you to be her emissary? I have relayed my message. Farewell, Lady. Their combined power has grown immensely. Enough to almost rival my own. So be it. <laughs> 